Good afternoon, distinguished guests. It's an honor to stand before everyone that is here today. And I'm very grateful to be granted this honor. As you all know, I am Kogi Miria Prudence. Uh, do not be confused, I'm from Kaduna State. I bear the name Kogi because Kogi is a Hausa word. It means river. So, in case you didn't know that, you know that. <laughs> so, I'll be talking about the topic that is given to us. Uh, Re-engineering the Nigerian system for sustainable development. The first time I came in contact with, that is, I had to consider the word sustainable development was when I, I started working with an NGO that, that is concentrated on the need to be able to um, address the issues that plague Nigeria today. Number one, I am not going to, as usual, talk about the problems the devil this nation. We all know those problems. We are very well uh, versed in the problems that we devil this country. We know about the issues that that are that are in the air. So I would like to talk about the solutions to these issues, first of all. And I will start with the fact that I was happy that the topic of the essay did not uh, highlight the issue of change. Who else has a post-traumatic uh, you know, um, response to the word change? We all do. <laughs> You know, change was supposed to be a positive word. It was supposed to take us from point A, where we were backward, to take us to point B, where we would be forward. But we can all see what has gone on. So, I would say that the Nigerian system needs uh, re-engineering because the system that is in place now has failed us. Who else agrees? The system has failed us. That is why. That is why we are here today talking about re-engineering the Nigerian system for sustainable development. I would like to talk from a very layman's point of view. I would say that development, in my definition, uh, putting together all the research that I put into this uh, very uh, topic, uh, I would say that devil, um, development is when all the good things of life go wrong. It is when all the good things of life, all the basic necessities of life go wrong and some, regardless of the caste system, re regardless of class, regardless of anything that puts strata and hierarchy to uh, the, the, the citizens of any country or the world at large. And I'll say that sustainable development is when development, advancement, when good things are going wrong and it does so for a long period of time. That is sustainable development. And I believe that the Nigerian system does not need an ad hoc fire brigade approach to redesigning and restructuring it. I believe we have to take this system part by part. We need to take it apart and restructure, redesign it to be able to reach the future generations. I would like to say also that I do not consider us, the youth, the young ones, as the leaders of tomorrow again this has been outdated. Tomorrow means that there is still something to wait for ahead. I would like to say that the youth are the leaders of today. We will start from there. We will start from now. What has... What has challenged the 
the Nigerian system today, especially vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Nigerian citizens and its leadership, is that Nigerians have always relied on the Nigerian leaders to do everything for them. Whenever you hear a party talking about, that is a gathering of people talking about the issues of Nigeria, you always hear, ah, our leader so, ah, is it not, is it not when, is it not this person, is it not that, that person? What about me? What about you? Are we so handicapped that we cannot stand up to do something about the things that are challenging us in this country, will we continue to sit down at home and rely on just the, a few powerful 1% to decide our past, present, and future? No. I say no. So, I would like to say that um, Barack Obama, in his Howard, in his Howard Convention speech, said, we can we cannot achieve change when we wait for some other person or we wait for some other time the change we are the change we seek Tim Lahai also said we cannot wait for other people to decide things for us we need to take matters into our own hands this is the time so i would like to say that this time that we have been given is a time for us to make a change in our own little way. Change has never just happened. It started from level to level until we reach where we want to go. So allow me to quote the first black president of America again, Barack Obama. He said, passion is vital. You are all fired up now. We all know what we want, but we, we, we don't know how to go about it. So he said, passion is vital, but we must have strategy. For every time that the Israelites went to battle, God gave them a strategy. consulted God, God gave him a different strategy. So we must be a people of discernment. We must be a people of knowledge and understanding. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. We must be a people of understanding. So what are these, what are these solutions? I'll start by saying the role of the family is key. The role of the family is key. The UNICEF conducted a four-year study and realized that family roles played a very pivotal role to achieving six of the seven sustainable development goals of 2030. And we have them as health, gender equality, youth unemployment, poverty, education, and violence. These are the cardinal issues that plague the world at large, and we know that Nigeria is at the center of it. The family is very key. The family is, as we learned in social studies, is the basic unit of the society. That is, if we get it wrong in the family, we will never get it right at the societal level. Talking of the national level, we not have it. So, that even when God was to send Jesus down to the earth to come and save it, he did not send him down as an adult. He sent him into a family system. was <laughs> by men. He was the son of God, but he was groomed by men, and I believe that that also uh, played a role in how he was able to carry out his, his purpose on earth. 
So in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it said, Train up the child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the next the next part is the role of the youth, and I've already highlighted that. If I end up on her said youth are the true engine of societal growth and development. 70% of our heroes past were youth. And I took a cumulative research study on the, the ages of the leaders, past leaders that have led us. And I saw that the average age was 54. And more than half of those leaders who led us were below the, 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 the age of of 50. So youth are very paramount. If they are not included, if they are not involved, they will not be able to contribute. Youth are into many vices because they have not been included. This year's uh, um, International Youth Day, the topic was intergenerational solidarity. So we are not saying that the youth should work alone. It says the youth should work hand in hand to, with the older generation because of their wisdom and understanding to be able to bring change to this country. David, <laughs> Solomon, Jeremiah, Daniel, Esther, Timothy, whom Paul said, let no man despise your youth. This was the people that contributed to the history of the Of transformation on a normal. We can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, 7 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old have passed away, and the new has come. The church has to contribute to the national development that we need today. In the 19th century, missionaries came, brought Christianity, and brought Western education. Christianity and development are at par. Research has it that those places that are Christian dominated are by far economically, educationally, and uh, uh, structurally more developed but than other places that are not. So the Ten Commandments is featured in all the national laws, all the, the laws in the world. It is, it is featured there. That's to tell you how. Um, strategic the church is. So the Bible addresses issues on poverty alleviation in Acts chapter 32 verse um, Acts chapter 4 verse 32 to 35 where the disciples, the apostles also share things around. It talks, it talks on issues of health in healing, youth unemployment, unemployment where it says that whatever your hands find to do, you do it well. Hunger eradication, Jesus faith fed plenty of people two times, more than two times in the Bible. Praise God. Injustice, social injustice, any violence, all of these things. When he says uh, uh, we should not we should love our enemies and we should do good to them. It's the